Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about every profit maximizing firm's dream and every consumer's worst nightmare, price discrimination. With that said, let's get into it. So price discrimination is a common strategy used by businesses to increase their profits. In this video, we'll explain what price discrimination is, why businesses use it, and the three different types of price discrimination. Firstly, let's define what price discrimination is. Price discrimination is a pricing strategy where businesses charge different prices for the same product or service based on various factors such as the customer's willingness to pay, their location, or their consumption habits. Now let's explore why businesses use price discrimination in the first place. Well, the primary reason is to increase their profits. By charging different prices to different consumers, businesses can capture the maximum value their product or service has as perceived value changes from customer to customer. Another reason is to increase their market share. By offering lower prices to specific segments, businesses can attract more customers and thereby dominate the market. Now, there are three different types of price discrimination. We're going to discuss each one with an example. The first type is first degree or perfect price discrimination. In this type, the seller charges each customer their maximum willingness to pay. This type of price discrimination is the most efficient from the seller's perspective because they can capture all of the consumer surplus. However, it is also the most challenging to implement because it requires the seller to have perfect information about each and every customer's willingness to pay. For example, a car dealer may negotiate the price of a car with a buyer and the dealer will attempt to charge the buyer the maximum of their willingness to pay. The second type is, well, second degree price discrimination. And in this type, the seller offers different prices based on the quantity or the volume purchased. This type of price discrimination is commonly used by retailers who offer discounts on bulk purchases. For example, at a grocery store, they may offer a discount if you buy a certain amount of the product. This type of price discrimination benefits both the seller and the buyer because it allows the seller to increase sales volume and the buyer can enjoy a lower average price per unit. The third type is, you guessed it, third degree price discrimination. In this type, the seller charges different prices based on the customer's demographics, such as age, income, or location. This type of price discrimination is common in many industries, for example, the airline industry, where prices vary based on the time of booking, the destination, and the season. Third degree price discrimination allows the seller to segment the market based on consumer characteristics, which allows them to maximize their profits by charging higher prices to customers who are willing to pay more and lower prices to customers who can't pay as much. Now, there are some potential drawbacks to price discrimination, including reducing consumer surplus and possibly leading to consumer dissatisfaction and backlash. However, when done correctly, price discrimination can lead to increased profits for business, more efficient use of resources, and believe it or not, an increase in consumer welfare. To summarize what we've gone over so far, price discrimination is a pricing strategy used by businesses to increase their profits by charging different prices to different customers. There are three types of price discrimination, first degree, second degree, and third degree. Each type has its own characteristics that can be used in various industries. By understanding the economics of price discrimination, businesses can better tailor their pricing strategies to maximize their profits. So thank you for watching this video. We hope you found it informative. If you did, let us know by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and of course, leave us a comment telling us what economic topics or homework questions you'd like to see us cover in the future. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll catch you in the next. Thank you.